Now come along and listen to us talk with the Bon Jam. Go and have a lovely little walk with the Bon Jam. Maybe put it on and go to bed with the Bon Jam. Or grab yourself a slice of toast and spread with the Bon Jam. Hello and welcome to Bon Jam with me, Simon Jeffrey, and I'm joined by the Activision to my EA Games. It's Mr. James Turner. What an insult. (laughs) James, uh, does that give us some indication of what we're talking about today? Yes, so today we're discussing uh, James Bond in video game form. Video game format. A little look back at which of the video games we have played, uh, which ones we liked, which ones uh, we didn't. And uh, where we think we could do better. Uh, so let's start with you, James. What's the earliest video game you remember playing? The earliest one I remember, because I never had Golden, I never had an N64. No. When I was young, I had a PlayStation. So really, it's Paul with Tomorrow Never Dies. Right. Mine, obviously, is the very first James Bond video game, Shaken But Not Stirred, on the ZX Spectrum. Really? No. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was, in fact, the first one in 1982. I've just got Wikipedia in front of me. Uh, but yeah, uh, my first one was GoldenEye on the N64, right, which yeah. I think for a lot of people is still the benchmark. Mm-hmm. It became very much like uh, you know the game of that generation. Yeah. It had that kind of house party aspect of it. Get, ev- get all your mates around, you yeah. can plug you yeah, know, yeah. four controllers into the N64 and... Uh, yeah. Split screen it on a tiny little screen, <laughs> and I was rubbish at it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was you know, it was relatively limited. If you go back to play it now, it's it's you know you can't jump, you can't really look about. It's, yeah. mean, it's all on one level, and, uh, but that was enough really at the time. And mm-hmm. um, the game itself had a had a kind of replay value, I think, beyond a lot of more recent games. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it didn't take me long when I had my N sixty four. It wouldn't take me long to play the whole game all the way through. Yeah. But I would play it again and again and again, <laughs> you know. Um, so yours was Tomorrow Never Dies, um, which I never really played. Did you? Um, oh, yeah, that's the one I had with the PlayStation. I, I, I played once, so I never had it myself. Yeah. But it, it was third person, wasn't it? Yeah. What's your preference for a, for a Bond game? Um, it, it changes, but for the last probably ten years, I think. I've always believed that a Bond game should be third person. Mm. Um, just because I, I used to love first person games, but as time has gone on, I've experienced other games. I think for a Bond game, it should be cinematic. And I like games that make me feel like I'm playing a movie. Yeah. And I think the best way to experience that is to be able to see the character. Is to be able to see the character you're playing, yeah. Yeah. I think. Um... I would probably agree now, especially with what other games are out there. The likes of um, Call of Duty and those sort of games so dominate the first-person genre genre that Bond can't really compete in those arenas. But what it could do is occupy, you know, the third-person action-adventure, jumping, running, shooting... Yeah, absolutely. uh, ...game. I would love to see a Bond game... By say Naughty Dog in the style of Uncharted, something yeah, like that, yeah. that kind of level. Where, you know, with the still with the ability to aim and take cover when you need to, and things. Yeah, like that. well, I I often think Everything or Nothing was a game that was <clears> kind <throat> of obviously it came out before Uncharted, but it had all those hallmarks that Uncharted mm. brings to it. You know, there's driving, there's shooting, there's all sorts of different. There's a variety of gameplay uh, environments and Everything or Nothing. And I think that's uh, they were on the right track, and then it just kind of just. Yeah, well, I was going to get on to that. I, there, obviously, there were a few games before that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were Tomorrow Never Dies and The World Is Not Enough. But there wasn't a game for Dying of the Day, was there? But uh, No, but you, you had Agent Under Fire. But I enjoyed that game immensely, Agent Under Fire. Um, even looking back now, I think it still holds up quite well, Agent Under Fire. I used to really enjoy the... Um, Multiplayer on Agents of Fire, yeah, uh, Agents yeah. of Fire, especially the um, the Q Claw yeah. thing that you yeah. could you could just shoot around and latch onto anything and just hold your button down and you could just yeah, literally yeah. Ha- be hanging from a wall. And your jetpacks, uh, really good, it, yeah. really good level design on the multiplayer as well with the sort of ravine with the cable cars that yes would go across. Is that Nightfire? No, no, that's Nightfire. Nightfire. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, one of my favourite things to do was to put the um, the timed mines on the cable car so they blew up yeah, exactly yeah. when they reached the other side yeah. and once or twice I got a couple of like lucky hits with someone <laughs> who just happened to be running into that area at the time and it just took them out and it was such yeah. a good feeling um, I don't know that I ever actually owned those I think I just I, yeah. they were on uh, PlayStation 2 weren't they 
Uh, yeah, well, Age Under Fire was ex- exclusive to PlayStation 2, and then it, about, I think it was about maybe a year or a half a year later, it was released on Xbox and uh, GameCube. And then Nightfire also had a PC release, which is actually different to the um, console version. Well, I've got Wikipedia in front of me here. You're right. It says, uh, in 2001, EA released Agent Under Fire for Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. Mm-hmm. Um, Nightfire was released for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox with a PC port by... Gearbox software. Yeah, so it was. It so. could follow the same story, but it had different level design. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. So I didn't own those ones, but then I came back to owning a Bond game in 2004 when Everything or Nothing came yeah, out, which yeah. was the first one to have Pierce Brosnan's voice as well. As well, and um, I remember seeing that for the first time and hearing Pierce Brosnan speak in an original game. Yeah, I was actually. It's quite exciting. Actually, that was a strange time because it was technically his last performance as it Bond, because yeah. it was Sadly. 2004, so, so it was after Die Another Day, where he was technically still Bond, under mm-hmm. contract, yeah. but I don't know that he knew that was going to be his last outing, but I really was impressed by the scope of that, like the cast they had, like Willem Dafoe, yeah. uh, they had, um, what was her name, uh, Shannon, Shannon Elizabeth, Elizabeth yeah. um, they had, what's her name now, oh my god, mine's gone blank. Did they have? Uh, there was another woman in it. Yeah, um, oh my <laughs> a God, my, woman. The mind has gone. <laughs> mind has gone blank. What's her name now? Heidi Klum. Heidi Klum. Yeah, of course. Um, they had Richard Keel in Richard it. Keel. I don't know quite what he did. He growled or grunted at some point. <laughs> they, they did bring him into the studio, I believe. Yeah, so. I think they I must got, have. Uh, I don't know what they must have taken his likeness or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It was nice to have him back. And uh, Maya as well. He did the the theme, the theme song. song yeah. He played a character as well. Interesting um, plot. With uh, written by Bruce Fierstein of um, yeah, yeah, it was of, uh, yeah. the Bond series fame, uh, as well as Danny Bilson and Paul DiMeo. Thank you, Wikipedia. That's not just off the top of my head. We've improved the nanobots, altering their makeup with fungal spores found only here in the Louisiana Bayou, turning what was conceived as a blessing into a curse. Anything they penetrate will be instantly destroyed from within. Um, we've got a larger problem on our hands than we thought. Agreed. Nanobots that destroy metal. They're going to disintegrate the levees, flood the city. You've got to stop it, 007. A really interesting... Um, high concept. Yeah, high yeah. concept plot, but one that I uh, always seemed a little bit far-fetched at the time, but probably less so now. Like, nanotechnology is a thing, and... Uh, yeah. Nanobots, well, you know, really yeah. kind of clever, and you could disrupt them with your gadgets yeah, or control yeah. them in various ways. Sean Callery did the music. Who uh, does the music for for one of your favourite TV, TV shows? shows Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it had John Cleese. As oh yeah, John Cleese and and Judy Dench. Yeah. Yeah, there's what? a funny part in it where basically they obviously got John Cleese in to, go, to do some lines, and he sounds his usual kind of slightly bored self, like he does when he does like the voiceover in the scene it games, where it's just like, <laughs> just give me the paycheck. <laughs> uh, but he basically says, now let me introduce my gadgets. My assistant will explain them to you. <laughs> it's like they didn't really give him that much yeah. to do. And then he's got... Uh, a Japanese assistant called Miss Nagai. Yeah. Uh, and that's just me remembering it, which is that's, weird. That's, that's impressive. Welcome back, 007. We have several upgrades for you. Miss Nagai. Your stealth suit will now make you fully invisible. Which I like to think is maybe just... It's catering to the Japanese. Oh, yeah, in a way, just sort of yeah. uh, making it more of an international... Well, she was on the main cover for the Japanese version. Of the game. Oh, OK, yeah. So instead of... I think it was Heidi Klum that was... Um, on the main game for yes, us. Yes, it was, and they had uh, Pierce kind of reaching behind her with his gun Yeah, out. yeah, uh, so I think in the Japanese version it was Miss Nagai. Yeah, well, I'm all in favour of that, but it just it struck me that it was perhaps also because they didn't have John Cleese for long. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. We, all you need to do is just say, over to you, Miss Nagai, <laughs> and she'd be like, yes, well, this is what your nanotechnology does. But really, what I loved about that game was just the variety of levels. Yeah, yeah. I pl- I replayed loads of those levels a lot of times, like the motorbike levels when you're just basically running down this uh, steep highway, streets. Yeah. And there's one that you can jump up into like a uh, oh, aqueduct. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. 
But yeah, the, uh, the the bridge level as well, where you're just speeding through oncoming traffic and you have to slide under the tankers. And yeah, I played that again more recently and just couldn't keep up with like the frame rate and the speed of it all. I was like, oh my god, how do they ever play this on a tiny little screen? But uh, yeah, oh, I'm gonna have to maybe even buy an old PS2 just for that game. I still got mine, so I might have to get out again. You know, oh so, wow. Yeah. Like the one thing I remember finding a little bit difficult going back to it was just you know the controls of that kind of free moving aiming system. Yeah, but I think g- games as time goes on do date anyway, and I think you yeah. know if you compare it to something like Uncharted, you know it will update it. But I think- yeah, but then even when I first played Uncharted, I found it difficult to aim just because it's like oh, it doesn't lock on to anyone. You just literally <laughs> yeah, yeah, have yeah. to. So I think I'd be better at it now than I was, and I think it's probably worth a shot. I remember it looking quite good as a game as well, like yeah. graphics-wise, I they, they, they would stand that, up yeah. pretty well. Had a nice combat system, yeah. And I have to say, it's probably an Activision thing. It coincided with EA uh, rescinding the rights and Activision taking over. But the the more recent games seem to rely more on kind of quick time events and uh, yeah. and things like that. But um, Everything or Nothing is a high point for me in terms of the Bond video game series. So then later in 2004, we had Goldeneye Rogue Agent, which I never played. Did you play it? I did, and was incredibly disappointed by it. Is this the one where Bond just gets killed in the beginning? Yeah, and you have an eye that does all this magic stuff. So it's nothing like... Goldeneye. There is a damn level, I think, from what I can remember. It's the one, probably the only James Bond game where I only did one playthrough of it because I just thought it was that bad. Wikipedia article says this game was panned for its misleading title and poor storyline. Oh well, yeah, they're just. <laughs> I think they were cashing in. on. Yeah. The thing is with Goldeneye, especially on the N sixty four, is it holds a special place for a lot of people. Yeah. And they were cashing in on that, yeah, that and game. exploiting the warm feelings for that game by kind of promising more of the same but really it was nothing to do with it uh 2005 saw the release of from russia with love so from what i gather goldeneye rogue agent was basically a a bridge to another pierce Brosnan original story bond game Hmm. which they'd already begun but then pierce Brosnan obviously was was dropped as bond and there was a bit of limbo as to where bond was going to go next so they went back to the old films and did for much of love. So I played this and obviously it bore some resemblance to From Russia We Love, but it had added elements mm-hmm. and it had like Natasha Benningfield in it. Yeah, it, found me, yeah. it was a sort of similar type of gameplay to Everything or Nothing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it reached the heights Everything or Nothing does, I think. No, some it did have felt rushed. some variety in the gameplay. Yeah. There were a couple of driving there levels. Were. But I didn't think that handled as well as. No, I, I, I didn't replay that to the level I replayed everything yeah, or nothing. Yeah. So that was 2005, mm-hmm. and it was released on uh, GameCube, Xbox, PS2, and there was a PSP version as the well. Ones, yep. And then, according to Wikipedia, mm-hmm. I'm not going to pretend I'm making this up, I'm just going to read it, Electronic Arts announced in 2006 a game based on then-upcoming Casino Royale, uh, but it ended up being cancelled because it would not be ready for the film's release in November. Mm-hmm. This fact, which would lead MGM to lose millions in licensing fees, along with EA's commitment to moving away from the movie franchise game and focusing more on internal intellectual properties, led the company to abandon the Bond franchise in May 2006. Yeah. Um, which Sad then... times. <laughs> yeah, um, I I thought EA did some good moves and bad moves with the franchise. Uh, and I think they did more good than Activision would eventually do. The, the um, issue with, with all of the companies who've had the Bond title in their uh, catalogue mm-hmm. is that they've never really treated it as their kind of biggest property yeah. and never really given it maybe the attention that these big AAA games deserve. Yeah, And maybe that's because it wouldn't have sold as much as games that were starting to take over, like the Call of Duty series and things like that. Yeah, but it always struck me that, like, as a Bond fan, I was like frustrated and yeah. oh, come on, come on, you've got like the biggest film series under your belt. Yeah, and you, you, you're the only company that's got the right to make the game, and you're making a really generic game that could almost not be a Bond game. Yeah. So, shortly after EA abandoned the license, uh, Activision acquired it, and their first game was Quantum of Solace. 
It was indeed. Which, which... strangely enough, seeing as uh, EA were going to make a game based on Casino Royale... Mm-hmm. They'd probably have more Casino Royale there is, levels there is... in. Cause it, well, because it was it's... being made, I think, based on on the script for Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace, I don't think, yeah. was out at that point. And... Um, and so some bits are very similar. You know, they had the cast back, which was yeah. good. They had uh, Daniel Craig's likeness. It's actually a pretty playable game. I might have to replay Quantum of Solace because it's been a while since. Then. It's based on a solid engine. So, you know, all the mechanics of it work pretty well. Mm. It plays almost more like a mod than a, <laughs> than a game in a way because it was powered by the Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare engine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was a solid foundation you know the, the gameplay felt um slick enough yeah but the um the variety wasn't there no i remember they brought into an idea where it only took cover it would then go into third person mm. which is like saying that well we know really bond needs to be a third person game because we need to see bond that's why yeah you and when cover. you'd enter like kind of various combat situations i think it would give you quick time events of like press triangle now whatever yeah and it yeah, might go right. to little sequences with, that were third person and it does seem a shame that they were limited to that because they had daniel craig's likeness and it was yeah. a pretty good likeness of him as well one of the most frustrating things that the game did was that it didn't have proper cinematic cutscenes. No. It played out almost entirely on kind of computer screens as if you're Yes, that's right. As yeah. if you're overhearing a conversation between M and Tanner. Yeah. And vast portions of it were played out like as characters watching blips on sonar <laughs> screens. Like yeah. they're chasing them, they've caught up with them. <laughs> oh, they've got away. The plane's crashed. Ah, oh, they've jumped out. They've made it safely. <laughs> you're like, oh that would have been nice to be able to play that level. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There, they've jumped. We're dropping fast. They've just connected in midair. Must have only one shoot between them. Come on, Bond. The shoot's deployed. They've slowed down. Now we've just got to find them before Madrano does. It starts with the end of Casino Royale, the pre-titled game level. Yeah, yeah. It extends that sequence after Mr. White gets shot, and then there's a whole shootout around that yeah. area, yeah. and then it ends with him um, chucking him in the boot of his car I believe but then the the car chase is just plays out over the title song that's right yeah, yeah. so you don't get to do the car chase and it's like oh come on yeah. and it's just constantly dangling the carrot of like things you could have played but can't yeah and in fact it's not just Activision that were guilty of this because um, in From Russia With Love the main sort of famous fight scene plays out as a cut scene as well yeah yeah um, but and the best bit in From Russia With Love where Bond has to shoot down a helicopter when I say best bit I mean the part in the film that would work well in a video yeah. game isn't even part <laughs> of the game there uh, are some nice elements in Quantum of Solace that they do flesh out quite nicely there's a nice opera level that's kind of uh, yeah. you know quite stealthy but there is a really random bit where you get into those caves after you've watched the uh, the two blips on the radar <laughs> survive the plane crash, which would have been lovely to play through. You see them land in that cave sequence as they do in Quantum of Solace. Yeah. And then you have a conversation between uh, Bond and Camille, and they talk about <laughs> that they're both looking for someone because they both lost someone. She says, oh, did you lose someone too? Yeah. And then you lost somebody too. Yes, I did. And then it goes to a flashback. Looks like our man, burn scars on his face. To the Madagascar scene in Casino Royale. Stop touching your ear. Uh, And you play through that, and it's actually pretty good. You do that that kind of uh, free-running chase sequence. Yeah, I I remember enjoying that. Well, the thing is, the PS2 version, that was purely third person. Oh, was it? Yeah. So you got to do that whole chase all in third person. I wonder why that's strange. Um, which is, yeah, it's weird. I'm pretty sure, because I played it after some time, because I got the game cheaply afterwards. Yeah. I think it's better. Yeah, uh, I can imagine, because you have those that kind of precariousness of like balancing up on the cranes and stuff. It yeah. does go into third person, I think, a little bit, because you've got that kind of balance. There is, yeah, thing. you're right, yeah. But there is a sense in those games when it's first person that you're kind of just sliding around the level a little bit. Yeah, and it's yeah. nice to see you running, actually, yeah. in third person. But yeah, you're right. The game received mixed reviews, but the PlayStation 2 version received the best reviews yeah, on yeah, average it's um, a better game and I think it is because of that third person element of it it's, it has that more cinematic feel to it mm. well I, I did enjoy it for what it was in that I got it very cheaply on PS3 yeah. I think maybe if I'd paid 
top dollar for it, I might have been a bit let down because it was a bit hollow and a bit didn't make any sense really. Like the no. the the, um, the plot structure was just like, oh, okay, now we're going to flash back and play through the entirety of Casino yeah. Royale, and it was purely a film tie-in. It was, yeah. yeah. And there were some bizarre levels, like where you have to escape from the casino after being drugged and the whole yeah. the whole building is warping around you. Um, but yeah, the most frustrating thing was just literally listening to characters like M and Tanner describe things that would have been wonderful to play through and you just don't get to. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, no, just don't, don't tell us those things. <laughs> don't just show us them in front of us. Uh, yeah, and it just seems like really cheap and compromised in that sense, but definitely playable and it had a, a multiplayer on it as well. Yeah, I did play it a few times. It was just online, was it? It was just online. Yeah, you couldn't do it split screen. But I didn't have anyone online to play with. So <laughs> I was just I playing a bunch of there's anyone on there now on the server. No, no. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it was quite popular when I was playing it. Yeah, uh, so then in 2010, we had GoldenEye 007 remake for the Wii. Yes. Uh, which I didn't play the Wii version, but I later, when it was uh, ported... To, to in Wii. 2011, it was ported Reloaded. to the PlayStation 3 and uh, Xbox 360, as, like you say, 007, uh, GoldenEye 007 Reloaded, and it was upscaled to HD, and... It was essentially, it started off very faithful to the N64 version in the level design. Yeah, yeah, I, but I, I don't play that game and go, oh, this is just like Goldeneye. It's, it's... No, but I don't even know if you play the N64 Goldeneye. I, I think that's probably best left in the past the way you remember yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, the things that don't quite feel right, and I know they had to do them, but obviously the likenesses aren't there. You've got Daniel Craig in that situation. Yeah, yeah. And all the other actors are, they don't look like their film counterparts, so no, the, Alec the, looks different. They've done it as if it's Goldeneye has just been made into a recent Daniel Craig film. Yeah. And that doesn't sit well with me. No, um, I mean, this just goes back to, I, 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 I like it when they do a new story, because I don't know what to expect. Yeah. And, um... And so it's fine. It starts off quite faithful, and I think a lot of the publicity in in you know the clips they showed you were those with the dam level and the facility level, yeah, well, obviously because they were very similar, yeah. and they're the ones people remember. But it diverts from that soon after, from what I remember. Yeah, yeah it's got it's... a completely different ending in this kind of reactor, yeah, kind of uh, yeah. silo complex or something. It's not on the satellite dish yeah. in Cuba or anything like that. From what I believe, the original Golden Knight for the Wii was released at the same time, or around the same time as Bloodstone. Yeah, it says a month later, yeah. after the release of GoldenEye 007 for the Wii, um, a leaked media release suggested that Activision had hired Bizarre Creations to work on Bloodstone, an original Bond story written by uh, Bruce Feirstein, and both games were released in November of 2010. Yeah. Uh, Bloodstone was on the PC, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and DS... Yes, it was. With yeah. mixed to positive reviews. I remember that quite fondly. I do, and I think that, obviously, Uncharted had come out, at least the first game had come out by then. Yeah. And I think they were trying to emulate elements of that in that game. I remember it being short. I completed it, yeah, it was, in it's, about it's, four yeah. hours, I think. But um, but they were onto something. I know the original intention was to make a sequel to Bloodstone. And the end... The ends film, on a the game, yeah, it ends it? on a open-endedly. Yeah, um, I can't remember how it ends, but I remember, um, I remember it being unresolved a little. Yeah, uh, but they never picked that up, and it never probably will be. Um, no, I wouldn't expect it would be. No, uh, but yeah, I thought it was the, they wanted something with Bloodstone. They they were trying to emulate that third-person Uncharted feel to it. There's driving levels. Yeah, there's I like it because I like it when it has its own story. It has its own theme. Tune yeah. with uh, Joss Stone yeah, performing yeah, it, did, which yeah. I quite like. Um, and it used that, it, it was third person, mm -hmm. but it was like that kind of slightly offset to one yeah, side was, third yeah, person yeah. where you feel like you're almost sort of strafing through the le levels. Yeah. A little I, bit like uh, Dead Space yeah. or something like that, where you're off to one side, which takes a little bit of getting used to, but I do like kind of being able to see the character and uh, the details. And the game looked quite nice from mm -hmm. what I recall. I don't really remember Charity. much about it beyond the car chase level, which I just kept falling off the level. There was one that was just in the Aston Martin where yeah. it, was just, it was just things were going so fast you couldn't really, if you took any slight turn wrongly... You'd just slide off. Yeah, you'd fail the mission, essentially. But there were other chases where you had to drive like, like a pickup truck. Yeah, chase something. they were trying different things. Yeah. Um, I liked 
that they were not relying on a film tie in. Mm-hmm. I, I always feel like those ones where they create a new title and they get a singer in to do the theme and it feels like they've given it more attention than, yeah. than some of them where it's just kind of a rehash or a quickly cobbled together game like 007 Legends that came out <sighs> in uh, 2012. See, when they announced that, so they're going to be making games based off the old films uh, and I was like, really? This is amazing news. This is a, uh, they're going to be going back to the past recreating those classic moments in Bond history yep. in video game form. Then I was a bit let down that I found out that Daniel Craig was doing it and not Roger Moore or Sean Connery. Or yeah, um, I mean, I know that they kind of had to. Yeah, and then I was let down even further when it was first person. I was like, okay. But- first person worked for me for what they were doing. If I'm going to play through all these old films, I don't want to see Daniel Craig. So my problems with it were conceptual i didn't like the lazy plot device it was obviously the 2012 was the 50 year anniversary of the bond film series it was also the release of skyfall that year and it was the olympics that year and there was a lot of kind of milestones that they were trying to release something in time to to kind of coincide with daniel craig's bond films are a reboot of the franchise that stand completely separate from anything that went before it in theory yeah in fact yeah I'm not debating this. No, but what I'm trying to say is that in the video game universe, I keep that separate. Oh, video games don't enter into my thoughts personally. I don't watch the films and go, "Uh, how come he's alive because I killed him in the video game? (laughs) But I don't like anything that risks confusing other people. Yeah. And yeah, backing think, up any yeah, argument yeah. they might have about it. Yeah. It's amazing how many people struggle with the concept of a reboot. Everything that's went before does not apply here. And so it takes this kind of premise where Bond is shot in Turkey during the opening of Skyfall and essentially his life flashes before his <laughs> eyes in a kind of really lazy kind of way. And we flash back to see some missions from his past, mm-hmm. which unfortunately cross back into the uh, previous Bond timeline and we get to see all these. I mean, I would have preferred it to just be showcased to us as celebrating the Bond series. And yeah. you just don't even try and construct a framing narrative. Mm-hmm. Just let me play as Sean Connery in this level. Let me play yeah. as Roger Moore in it. That w- that's how I would have loved to have played it, um, because I don't like it when they kind of cloudy up the waters and confuse the more casual fan as to what's real and what's not. Yeah. <laughs> so what were the levels we got to play through? Do you remember? Yes. So the first one was Goldfinger. Yeah, that was like the Fort Knox level, wasn't it? They had three levels per film. Okay. Didn't they? So they, they had the Fort Knox one. Uh, I think one was outside Fort Knox, one was indoor, inside. And then we had On a Majesty's Secret Service. You did, yeah. And we uh, had... You had a skiing level, which is by far one of the worst levels I've ever played. Is that the one that was just kind of like a slalom, but you just kept hitting trees and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just really impossible. And I, I played the, the level on like classic difficulty, which meant you had to collect health packs if you wanted yeah. health. So if you crashed into a tree... But I seem to remember you warning me about this and I just went straight through it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But did we play on classic difficulty? I don't know. I can't uh, remember. If on classic difficulty, it's next to impossible. But, I mean, the assault on Biz Gloria was a, was a good level, a good choice yes, of a level. Yes, yeah. Well, that's that's one of the ones that we've played. They, didn't have, they didn't have a huge number of films to choose from with uh, George Lazenby, but that was kind of made for a video game as well and it was, it was quite cool. Then you had Moonraker. Moonraker, you had, yeah. And then we had License to Kill. Yep. And then they took us to Dine of the Day. And I remember when that came out, and a lot of people remember the comments saying, why are they chosen Dine of the Day as the Pierce Brosnan film? Why are they because they've better done Bond films? <laughs> because they've done every other Bond film already as a video game. If you want to play you a video a game version of that, play that. Then you had a, then you had a bit of Skyfall at the end. But I want to stick yeah. on this, because this is basically going to form the basis of the rest of our conversation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've talked about this before, and we'll, we'll we'll go back to From Russia With Love as well. But we talked about this previously, and we essentially decided that when they did From Russia With Love, it was more or less, from our point of view, the worst choice of film to make into a video game. Yeah. And we both like From Russia With Love. It's one of the best Sean Connery films, I think, yeah. But in terms of, like, films that, that are suited to playing as video games... Yeah or at least in the type of video game they were making, they had to add a lot to that game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, You could make it as a really good kind of uh, espionage game if you built that sort of gameplay into it. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of wonder whether the fact that they got Sean Connery to do come out of retirement to yeah. do a Bond video game is pretty impressive. I wonder if they said, Sean Connery, if you were to do it, we'll do whatever you want to do. See, I... And I, I'll try and find a clip of it, but um, my problem with it was that Sean Connery... <laughs> His likeness was in the film yeah. as the sort of 32 year old or whatever he was. His voice was of an uh, 85 year old or <laughs> however, you know, an 8 year old. And his voice has changed. It has changed, yeah. The plan, old man, is that you die on the train. I should have known red wine with fish. I should have known red wine with fish. <laughs> It just didn't match, like, the sound of him. And I just kept saying to my friend at the time, they should have done a Roger Moore film because his voice doesn't sound that different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have been great. You know, and like, and also Roger Moore's films are kind of kind of ready-made, more suitable yeah, absolutely. for the games. Yeah. Uh, oh, you could do... And that led us on to a conversation that we've had since of, like, uh, which would make great video games. And we did come to the conclusion, we went through all of Sean Connery's and we thought, I mean, start with the beginning, Doctor No. Mm. You would get that whole great kind of detective thing that he goes on. You get yeah. to, you know, mission, talk to Professor Dent or whatever, and you'd yeah, go and yeah. meet him. And uh, you and could almost turn it to like a little free roam yeah. area in Jamaica. Oh, I'd love that with if Crab like, Key if, as a, if, if Jamaica a thing was, you have to unlock. Yeah, yeah. If Jamaica was like a kind of uh, free roaming island, yeah. and you just have to go and meet people and you know meet uh, meet Strangway's bridge partners at, yeah, the, at yeah. the club. And just get information from them, and you have and, to avoid assassination from like the three blind mice and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and then when and, you found enough information or whatever, you kind of uh, okay, now go and meet Quarrel and yeah, head over yeah, to. Uh, yeah. Oh man, we're <sighs> gonna we're gonna get really frustrated because we're gonna get excited about. But this. Crab Key isn't unlocked until you've got all the information. When you've got yeah, that information, because yeah. maybe you can't get on a boat, and then you get a, you unlock Quarrel. Or if you boat. try, you'll just get shot down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. by the guy. <laughs> by the guys on the boat. The guy who speaks like he's speaking through a megaphone even when he's not. Yeah. Full speed ahead. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be cool. That'd be great. And then I remember... Do you remember I, I photoshopped I remember, an image? Yeah. I took a still frame from, from Dr. No of, of uh, Sean Connery um, wading through the swamp behind the guy that he stabs. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of photoshopped it to kind of colour grade it and sharpened it and, and painted the water more blue to make it look more like video game yeah, yeah. aesthetic. And I put like overlays in the corners of like weapon selection and health yeah. bars and things. And uh you know, I think it said press R two to subdue or something. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh my God, that looks so great. Like you can sneak through the water using the reeds to yeah. stay hidden yeah. and oh. Just the colours and textures of that game, it goes through loads of different... It, it could expand on different areas. You could actually get the um, Dr. No's kind of um, obstacle course could, yeah. from the book. Re- recreate that where instead. He, yeah. Where he climbs through the, the ventilation shaft. Yeah. You could actually get the squid in it from the yeah, book. Yeah, go for it. That go they didn't the do in the film, luckily, but... you, you know, they crabs. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh, it's tailor-made for it in a way, and it's quite a modest little film, but... I love the idea of this kind of like you're on the island, so you can kind of just go and explore yeah, and go and yeah. meet these people, yeah. and, you know. And if you go and meet um, Professor Dent uh, before you've taken the radioactive readings of the bauxite or whatever mm. it is, then it'd be like, sorry, Professor's not in at the moment, uh, you know. <laughs> and you can go and meet Miss Tarot. Yeah, and yeah. You get the the hearse chase. The hearse chase, yeah. And you have to avoid the little the little construction. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so many things you could you could elaborate on as they do in the video games. They take something that maybe is only hinted at in the yeah. in the in the films. Like you could have a, a fully fledged kind of casino game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do hope whoever owns the one license is listening to. Uh, to this. <laughs> I hope so. And then uh, obviously with From Russia with Love, which they did make, but then I touched on it earlier. But like From Russia with Love is 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 famous for. Having one of the best fight scenes in in uh, in cinema in, in terms of like close quarters fights yeah. with um, Bond and Grant, mm-hmm. um, but that is played out not in the um, sleeping berths of the the train, but in the restaurant car in yeah. the game, and it's not played out in a way that you can control it. It's just a cut scene. Yeah, yeah. And it just seems a real shame. And then actually, the final showdown in the game is is just made up, and you're shooting 
he's shooting rockets at you're you or right, something yeah, from from yeah. across the train line, and yeah. you're just you're aiming for like you have to shoot him like fifty times in like the ankle and then the wrist and then the knee yeah. and then the chin. You're right, yeah. I mean, I, it would have been very difficult to do that fist fight yeah, in a video yeah. game. Yeah, it's a good, but from Russia good with Love is a very kind of cerebral film <sighs> that doesn't lend itself to video game no. levels. No. Maybe the only part that maybe does is like you say the sniping of the helicopter, yeah. which would have been a co- kind of cool little bit, yeah, and maybe the gypsy camp. Didn't level. happen. Did they do do a gypsy yeah. camp level in the game. That's about as close on. as the yeah. film gets to being kind of suitable for it. I mean, Goldfinger, you're entering kind of like okay, you really don't have to change much at all here. Mm. But it does. It doesn't kind of inspire me in the same way Doctor No does of like the possibilities, the endless possibilities. Yeah, I, I just feel like they're all things we've played in a game before and mm. stuff. But you could have great bits like you know, beat Goldfinger at golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just that, a little yeah. mini game of that. Find Goldfinger's uh, ball and stand on it. <laughs> Yeah, you just play his odd job in the Yeah, it <laughs> would be wonderful. Oh um, Thunderball would be great. You'd have those underwater sequences, which would yeah. probably be great fun in a video game, even if they drag out a little bit in a film. But <sighs> They incorporated the jetpack in for much of the love of the game. Why not just make Thunderball a They game, did, so. yeah. He had that weird scene where you're all sort of floating around Big Ben on a jetpack yeah. and you've got, like, <laughs> Natasha Bedingfield in your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange game. Thunderball has a lot of stuff that happens at... Um, the spa mm-hmm. is it shrublands shrublands yeah i'm not yeah yeah that's either thunderball or never sin ever again <laughs> but yeah when he's at the health spa place you know there could be a certain level of kind of spy work yeah I'm thinking you know like um roaming around empty rooms looking in drawers yeah, stuff like yeah. that you could have um little showdowns with um Count Lippy and yeah. people like that. Um, it's not really huge scope there for stuff that obviously lends itself to video games. I mean, I'm playing the Spider-Man game at the minute, and there's levels in that where you just play it as Peter Parker, just walking around a little yeah. room and stuff like that. And there's, there's things like that that kind of just give you a break from the main gameplay. I suppose it's, it depends what you look for in a video game. I know some people literally don't care about story at all in a video yeah. game. Yeah, well, that's it, yeah. And they just want to, like, give me a gun and give me some enemies, you yeah. know. Whereas my, my favourite games are things like Uncharted and Last of Us... Yeah games where I get invested in the story and also I just enjoy being in the world and and the texture of it and Mm -hmm. the richness of it and so being able to just kind of have a level where you just walk around this really detailed health spa and chat to employees and see if they've seen anything (laughs) and you know stuff like that would be kind of cool and uh, it would be fun to you know meet up with these allies and investigate down yeah. planes and stuff like that but I still think for me so far Doctor No is the most exciting prospect yeah, just because yeah, it's yeah. like the film hints at these various things that you you could expand on hugely Yeah, yeah. Uh, You Only Live Twice is like a video game already yeah. um, it, it would be mostly kind of in one place you wouldn't have the glow trotting no, fun no. of some of the other games but you'd have this possibility of having a really detailed, rich Japanese setting and the volcano Volcano. finale would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, that's it. A lot of the Bond finales make great video game levels yeah. and that's something For Russia Love doesn't really have a massive finale. And that's why it doesn't work. um, has several little kind of finales in a way. Yeah, you've got a little boat bit. In fact, the the bit with the boat which is probably the most explosive of all the finales is probably the weakest for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, the finale is like, okay, Grant's dead now. <laughs> you yeah. know? So You Only Live Twice would, would have that proper big game yeah. epic. The one thing it doesn't really have, and it's the same with uh, some of the, the other Blofeld films, it doesn't really have, like, a big boss that you'd kill and would be any kind of major adversary. What, Hans? <laughs> Hands. <laughs> you have to have some sort of like they'd have boss to, fight with they'd him. They'd have to then, embellish that a little bit. And then you, you've got to get him towards the piranha pool. Yeah. Uh, and then once he's there, then you can pull the right punches to throw him into the pool. Can you imagine like a really scary bit if you fell in? It's just like, <laughs> if you like, don't get out quick enough, you oh just get, <laughs> you just see your, yourself turn to a skeleton. <laughs> Beyond those, like they're, they're obviously the really famous bits of you and Live Twice, like the, the little Nelly gyrocopter scene, which they could just go to town yeah, with yeah. Um, there's a little bit of detective work in Japan which would be kind of cool yeah I, I love the bit where you know when he's being chased on the rooftops 
I, I think you'd, you'd probably want them to add extra bits in, like, investigate the Japanese fishing village and see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah. love, like, you know, games with different textures and levels and flavors. And, okay, this is just an all out firefight, and this level is just investigate and see what you can find. Yeah. What I don't like is games that kind of like, if you just wander around for 30 seconds not doing what you're meant to be doing, it tells you where to go. Yeah. I yeah. kind of like games where you just literally have to scour every inch to find, yeah, you know, part of the wall you can climb over or something. Mm-hmm. Um, or put two and two together and go, oh, I've got this gadget, but I wonder if I could use it here, rather than place your gadget here. Yeah. Um, so it would be kind of cool to have levels where you got to actually do some spy work. On a Majesty's Secret Service, which we got a little bit of in Legends, but that could have been a good one as well, because there's plenty of action. There's a lot of ski sequences that could be really cool mm. if they got the mechanics of that right. I mean, they've done skiing in a few Bond games. Yeah. They've done it in Tomorrow Never Dies, the game. Uh, they did it in The World's Not Enough, the game. Mm. And they've done it in Legends. And the best one was probably the Tomorrow Never Dies version, but they can they can do something with a good ski. Yeah, they need to get game. they need to get the physics and the mechanics of yeah. it right. So it doesn't we don't, you don't want it to just feel like you're playing kind of Wii Sports or something yeah. or or an Olympics yeah. kind of level. But there's there's other stuff in that film that would be great. And of course, it's got a great finale and a really picturesque location and mm-hmm. things like that. But you've also got like the safe cracking in uh, Gumbolt's uh, offices, yeah. which would be cool. You could look at the Playboy magazine. <laughs> um, <laughs> not 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 sure. Sure, I thought they'd include that. But. Sure, you could. But so far, every single film, other than From Us We Love, would have been a, yeah. more suited to, in terms of not needing as much changing about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah. Winton Kid could be kind of cool uh, as characters. And it jumps all over the world as well, which is kind of cool. Any one of those sequences, say Amsterdam or um, Vegas, could be really extended. And you yeah. have a car chase through yeah. Vegas. When you have to sneak into the, the White House. Oh, that'd be cool. the elevator. With, the, uh, with the grappling guns. Yeah. The thing is with all of these is like, as long as they let you do all these things yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's not just like, press X. <laughs> No, I want to be able to aim my own grappling gun, and I want to be able to miss. <laughs> That's the point, you know? Yeah. Because I want to be like, yes, I got it. Yeah. Perfectly, you know? You want a little bit of a Spider-Man feel to yeah, it, yeah. you know? And maybe not just kind of two shots and you're in, but maybe yeah. you have to utilise several gadgets in combination to, yeah. you know, while hanging from the cable, you get out your glass cutter or, you know, yeah. add stuff to yeah, it. By yeah. all means, it'd be great. Then I think when we enter the Roger Moore series of films, we enter prime video yeah, game Yeah, every single film Roger Moore is in is it can be and with the, so with so the exception of, of Roger Moore's voice becoming slightly more uh, creaky and squeaky uh, as he got older, he could definitely pass for his younger self better yeah. than Sean Connery could yeah, for yeah. us we love. Live and Let Die would be a fantastic video game. It would be. Um, you've got those beautiful kind of locations like New Orleans and you've got the Caribbean and yeah. uh, New York. So it's got these contrasting locations. Um, you've got this kind of overtone all the way through of this kind of uh, early 70s black exploitation kind of theme yeah. running into it. So you could have those scenes going into the filet of soul. And there's tons of vehicle chases in, yeah. in that. You've got yeah. a boat chase, you've got a bus chase, you've got a plane chase. And of course, you'd have gadgets from the film that you could put to other uses. Like, So you could have a magnetic yeah, watch. Magnetic, well, yeah. And I think it would make a really cool game. You'd have a train level at the end. But yeah, like you say, loads of uh, chases. You'd have crocodiles and alligators in it. And um, I think from for me, the most exciting thing about that game would be the world of it and the story of it and the feel of it. Yeah. Kind of like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna escape into a world of like voodoo and funky seventies uh, yeah. stuff and just the, the boat chase. You could even have a, a bit where the game switches to Sheriff Pepper and you have to chase him as Sheriff Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's you know like in the way GTA just switches characters and yeah GTA Five, and then it switches back again and you carry on with the boat. Well, games. I think the Live and Let Die video game would have like the film an extended section where you just forget about Bond altogether <laughs> and you concentrate on this racist southern <laughs> sheriff. Tell it. I got me a regular man hurt out of here. 95 minimum. Oh, it would just be a really fun, immersive yeah. world. Objective, buy a toy snake from the voodoo <laughs> shop. <laughs> you get a little trophy for while she's about to wrap up the snake, you just pick it up and turn it uh, lengthwise, if you don't mind. <laughs> You get a little achievement. Bond <laughs> moment. But uh, just being able to play a third-person Roger Moore game, just 
like to see you moving around as Roger Moore. Give it to me now, please. Yeah. The Man with the Golden Gun would be fantastic for a number of reasons. Mostly because you'd have a great kind of final level with like a fun house that could really be embellished and you'd have a proper final boss. Yeah. Yeah, that you have to chase down through the fun house. Yeah. You'd have elements of it that you could probably improve on from the film. There are a number of really interesting kind of elements that are touched upon in the film and not really developed in the way that you might hope. Imagine just being able to walk around and explore the MI6 headquarters that's all like a crooked angle yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It'd be really cool on that kind of half-sunken ship. But I think out of all the Roger Moore films, that's probably the one I'd probably least want to Probably. Play. Well, you'd get to do the car chase and you get to do that little barrel roll. Yeah, without the whistle, hopefully. Um, and you'd be able to look around and see Sheriff Pepper next to you <laughs> going, <"Wah!" laughs> I've never that done that before. before. <laughs> so yeah, I think probably in terms of Roger Moore's films, that would not be my top choice. Yeah for a video game that honour might go to the very next one in the series The Spy Love, the me. Spy Love me which would be a brilliant game right from the very first yeah. level you know Snow Chase So does skis, England yeah. <laughs> and then you've got um, <laughs> that was another one of those photoshopped yeah, uh, mock up yeah. images I did where it was just Bond skiing off the edge of the cliff yeah. and I just kind of uh, put an overlay that said press X to deploy parachute yeah. or something <laughs> And you were like, oh, I want to play this game. Uh, But you just leave it and just see him plummet to his death. (laughs) But, yeah, you'd have, like, wet bike sequences. You'd have a a Lotus. Um, That would be amazing. You could drive your car into water. And if there's a way that you could make the kind of reprogramming of the missiles to be something you're actually able to kind of work out yourself. Yeah, a little puzzle. Yeah, Yeah. in some way. That would be kind of cool. Um Moonraker, actually, in terms of like the the films they picked for Legends, Moonraker was not a bad shout. In terms of the film being like larger than life, anyway, yeah, uh, all that stuff leading up to space before we even get there is full of video game opportunities that could be done in a really enjoyable way. Whatever you think of the film and how camp and silly it is, you could have a boat chase yeah, in Rio yeah, yeah. Ha- that turns into a hang glider sequence. Investigating Drax Industries. And-, and then you would finally get to the space level, which I actually quite like, because it doesn't pretend to be anything other than, yeah, we're going to space. Yeah, that stuff in the space station could be really cool as yeah. a level, especially if you're able to go to like zero G and actually mm. be out in space. Yeah. It might not feel like a Bond film necessarily if you were playing this in you know first person or something, but I think what would be cool is if like they kept the the score reminding you of that. Yeah, uh, the score is a big part of the films, and if they're going to make any Bond game, they need to keep the score. Yeah. So yeah, that would be great, and then you'd have uh, you, you'd get to fly the, the shuttles oh, and stuff, and then yes, for your eyes only, which. Although it was a down-to-earth um, Bond film after Moonraker, it's full of video game opportunities. You you could play as Melina. Yeah. 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 There's no reason why you, you could. Once Bond gets captured, then uh, Melina has to then assassinate. Yeah. Gonzalez. Uh, and you'd you'd have a crossbow as a weapon. Yeah. Which I love any game that gives you a crossbow <laughs> or a bow and arrow. You know, I just love that kind of thing. Um, you know, assassinate Hector Gonzalez. Yeah. And you get bonus points if you do it while he's diving off the board, <laughs> you know. So you could do this where it just goes back in time by about yeah. half an hour away. You have to actually sneak your way through as 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 Melina. Yeah, and then you have uh, proper spy stuff where you maybe they can add a bit in where you're spying on Locke and yeah, yeah. taking his picture yeah. or something, or you have to go and use the identograph. <laughs> uh, you could have, yeah, just recreate. Yeah, you could have Frederick Gray in there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mm. 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 That's all he says. Yeah. <laughs> He's really strange in that film. <laughs> you won't need to get a voice actor that sounds like him. Just get some. Just use the sound from yeah. the film. Yeah. Uh, and then um, you'd have obviously some some great colourful sequences like the the Citroen two CV scene. Yeah. Um, but there's also story, and you know, yeah. just meeting these characters and maybe having a kind of uh, conversational options in the game. Mm-hmm. to sort of yeah. choose what to say at different points. Like, you may have to kill him. Does this discourage you? Yep. Just tell me where he is. What were the other options you could have chosen? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Chris <laughs> And then he just stands up and shoots you. Yeah. <laughs> you could play a whole level as BB Dahl. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do like Win the ice skating quick, tournament. Quick time events. <laughs> That'd be great. 
Octopussy, I think, would be really good. It had that kind of yeah. Cold War feel yeah. to it. East versus West uh, Germany and some really larger-than-life characters like Olaf and a circus and things yeah. like that. Choosing when to reveal your, your Fabergé eggs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it'd be really cool. A View to a Kill would be good. Snow stuff, you'd have car chases in Paris. You'd have the, you know, chase up the tower. You could even have the, the horse chase. Yep, you could make yeah, a you could make, you could make a yeah. level of just walking around the races. Yeah. You can take out your oversized glasses <laughs> and look through the windows and spy on the meeting between uh, And then Zorin you have to find and... the right location yeah. to be able to do that. And then you, it turns out you have to use gadgets. And go if you stand the in the window. wrong place, it doesn't tell you you're in the wrong place, but Scarping just appears and kills you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, Bob Conley appears and gives you a location away. Yeah. And then you'd have... Um, <laughs> Living Daylights would be good. Yeah. That, again, similar to Octopussy, has a kind of brooding Cold War sort of feel yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. You could do the whole sniping sequence at the beginning. You could choose to shoot her in the face and end the game right there. And there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you... Then you could play as Necros when he attacks the uh, safe house. Well, it, what would probably happen is it would probably put you in that scene somehow and you could watch it all happening. But it would be good to play as Necros as yeah, well. yeah. Just destroy this building. It'd just be basically it'd be Hitman if you ever played Hitman. Yeah. Attack people and take this. That is probably one of the films where it would be more fun to play as the villain, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Play as Necros and yeah. just, you know, throw your milk bottles and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. You'd have a, a huge, spectacular finale with the Afghan resistance and. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the closest we get to that is like playing Uncharted 3. That's, that was my next <laughs> point, actually, yeah. I mean, it strikes me that someone at Naughty Dog must have been a fan of The Living Daylights when they made Uncharted 3, because there's a whole sequence where you have to chase the caravan yeah. travelling through the desert, yeah. and you, you're you on a horse, I think, and yeah, you have to yeah, catch yeah. up with the trucks and yeah. jump from truck to truck, which is brilliant. And then there's even a bit where you, you're hanging out the back of a cargo plane, mm-hmm. which is straight from there, Living yeah. Daylight. So, I mean, we've almost already got a game yeah. like that. License to Kill, we had a little bit of in 007 Legends, but not probably the bits that you'd want to play through. Like, no. you, what's, what's good about License to Kill is the bits where you really kind of... Uh, root yourself deep into Sanchez's operation and turn other people against him. Yeah, so it would be yeah. less, maybe, maybe less of an action game. But of the two Timothy Dalton ones they had to pick, I probably would have picked the other one and yeah. not gone for the Living Daylights. Um, obviously, we had Goldeneye. Yeah, well, now we're going to the territory where we think, actually, do we need these games now? Yeah, and like I say, like, we've had Goldeneye and it was pretty faithful. I think Goldeneye's been done to death now. Yeah, and I think in hindsight it's it's a good film. I think I think the game has kind of made it resonate for longer than it maybe otherwise would have done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not to say it's not a good film, yeah. but I think people's memory of the film now is so linked with playing the game of it as well mm-hmm. that it's you know it's it's top of a lot of people's list and i think that's because it's like nostalgic it's about such the game. a big part of yeah. them because it's like oh yeah we, we watched the film and we played the game of it whereas you don't get that from many of the others uh, so it's the same thing with like tomorrow never dies and all is not enough they've kind of been done but in terms of like obviously dying of the day for 007 legends was the right choice yeah. for a start because it's the only one that hadn't already been done once before but also it's the most cartoony and the most video game like of them all yeah anyway. and that. i think it would actually make a really good video game yeah because with the hovercraft chase yeah you get to do it like you get that whole first half of the film which is like an espionage thing where you're on the trail of various clues and you yeah, go and meet yeah. raul and cuba and yeah. people like that but it's colorful and bright and kind of video game like in its aesthetic it would be probably better than the film is to play it through like that you could play through blades and do the sword fight yeah and then you'd have like things that really belong in a video game in the first place like invisible cars and stuff like that yeah it's much less of a stretch to make that into a video game you just sort of take all those elements yeah. and do it anyway it's sort of tailor-made you don't have to really embellish much on it and it's yeah. kind of there already casino royale quantum solace we've kind of already had yeah. skyfall yeah. as well in legends and we're kind of getting to the point now where they're less kind of suited to. I mean, I don't, I don't really want to play through any of the Daniel Craig films as games now. I'm kind of no. like, no, Daniel Craig out, not getting anything mm. out of it anymore. I'd much rather get like a retro look back. Yeah. So of the ones we've talked about, if you had to pick one game to be made in the way we talked about, what would it be? I would say Doctor No, but I would say more. It's going to have to be. I'd love to play as Roger Moore in a Bond game. Yeah. So I'm going to go for. I'd probably say The Spy Love Me. 
Well, for me, it would be Doctor No. I got so excited just talking about it just now. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, so did I, but I, I just feel like I've played a Sean Connery game. Doctor right. No will only work if they do it in the way we've just described. That's what I mean. If it was made in the way we talked about, yeah. absolutely. With the kind of open world, world Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, I want that game. <laughs> Guys, if you're listening, call us. At us on Twitter. At Bon Jam Cast on Twitter. We'll tell you how to make it one game. Just hire us. Yeah. Honestly, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> and we know that billions of bi- billions of people would buy Doctor No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's certainly scope to do something slightly less linear than than the kind of four-hour gameplay of something like Bloodstone. Yeah, well, time will tell. Uh, my phone's not on right now, but it will be once we finish recording. So get us on Twitter. Um <laughs> And let us know if you need us uh, to advise you because we really care and that's what it's going to take. It's going to need someone who cares. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll probably end up doing another Bond video game podcast well, eventually anyway because there's a lot of stuff we've not discussed. We've not even discussed things like Double 7 Racing or the games that we've no, sure. What we might be doing in the future is in addition to the regular podcast episodes, I say regular, I don't know how regular it'll yeah. be, but in addition to the episodes we'll, we might be doing like the occasional bonus content on YouTube, uh, Bond Jam on YouTube, where we maybe do a bit of uh, multiplayer action on um, GoldenEye Reloaded, or mm-hmm. which I should say, because we we've talked about this in the past. But James and I are probably the only two people who've got our money's worth out of that. <laughs> <laughs> we play that multiplayer quite often. We often kind of lament the loss of uh, you know local split screen multiplayer. It seems to be a thing of the past, and it's kind of a shame because there is a social aspect to just being in the room with yeah, people isn't yeah, there? Yeah. I, I always enjoy that yeah I, I do miss that let's play games with James games with James you oh ready for God. games was, with I was, James I forgot all about that <laughs> right well, go on games with James games with James is a feature where I bring in a game or activity to play with James and uh, hopefully he'll have some fun doing it. James, are you familiar with the concept of the Mad Lib? Just remind me. So a Mad Lib is like a short kind of story where you're asked to fill in various details by giving uh, words like na- like a noun or a verb, things like that. Okay. And then you'll give me a long list of these things, and then I'll read out the story, and it's place these in place, okay? Okay. Yeah. So I've prepared these ahead of time. I've written little Bond stories... And I need you to fill in the gaps, okay? So okay. I'm going to read down the list. Look, I've got a nice like HTML document oh, wow. that I can. It's going to generate it for me. Yeah. James, firstly, I need you to name me an item of clothing. Now, T- this, t-shirt. Okay, so this doesn't have to be like strictly Bond related okay. or serious oh, yeah. or whatever. Just okay. give me like kind yeah. of the first thing you think of. A verb ending in ed. Uh, walked. An adjective. Large. Plural noun. It's plural noun. So a, a noun with an S on the end. Okay, all right, okay. Um, <laughs> televisions. A game. Agent Under Fire. Do you want to specify the console? Um, PlayStation 2. Agent Under Fire on the PS2. Yeah. Okay. Plural noun, again. Shoes. A number. Seven. An adverb. Um, hastily. An adjective. I've said large. Uh, we'll just go small. Another one. Strong? Did you have strong? Yep. Another one? Weak. A facial feature? Uh, nose. An occupation? Policeman. A noun? A table. A quote? Oh, a quote. Um, does that have to be a, a specific Anything quote? you want. Anything I want. Oh, God. Let's just go for... Do you expect me to talk? Uh, adverb? Uh, I had one before as well. So, quickly, for instance... I think that's what I was thinking of. Quickly? Yeah, quickly, yeah. That's probably the one I was thinking of. A place? Um, Manchester. An adjective? White. Okay, well, the next one I'm about to ask you is a colour. Okay. <laughs> Red. A verb ending in ed. Could you have smell? Yeah. A body part? Foot. A noun? A microphone? A place? Alton Towers. A noun? A Blu-ray case. A verb ending in ed. Um, I think that's just like a past tense verb, so it could be like sat. Yeah, verb. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just go with that. Sat. Another one. Disappeared. An adverb. Uh, oh, what's an adverb again? Describes a verb. <laughs> um, 
Magically. Wonderful. Noun. Sunglasses. Another quote. Welcome to the rock. I'm just, I'm just going to go to uh, <laughs> Sean Connery quotes now. A verb. Drove. Drive. Drive. Let's yeah. keep it present tense. Okay. Baby animal. A kitten. An adjective. Um... God, this is hard. Only two this. more. It's okay. It's I'll, cu- I'll cut this way down. Yeah, thank end. God. So don't worry about how long it's taken. Uh, I mean, for my sake, do hurry up. But don't worry about um, it. Round. And a final noun. Spaceship. <laughs> I just, I know where this is going. So here comes your Bond story, okay? okay. I try to write this in the style of Ian Fleming. James Bond put on his t-shirt and walked down to the casino. It was a large, large room that smelled faintly of televisions. Bond sat down at a table where several people were playing Agent Under Fire on the PS2 and placed a small stack of shoes on the table equal to seven dollars. The player opposite him looked up hastily. He was a small, strong man with a weak nose. Probably, Bond thought, a policeman judging by the size of his table. (laughs) Do you expect me to talk? said the man quickly. My name is Mr. Manchester, and you are... (laughs) Just then, a white woman with red hair smelled into the room and stood beside Mr. Manchester. She whispered something into his foot and slammed down a microphone on the table. What is the meaning of this? Mr. Manchester shouted. They're recording the person, they're recording it. So Don't like interrupt. It. The woman replied, I found it in Alton Towers. I think it's a Blu-ray case of some sort. <laughs> With this, Mr. Manchester sat and disappeared, then stormed out of the casino. The woman looked up magically. Don't worry, said Bond, picking up the Blu-ray case and placing it in his sunglasses. Welcome to The Rock. <laughs> Who are you? asked the woman as they started to drive. Bond. James Bond. Who are you? My name is Kitten Round Spaceship, said the woman. (laughs) Bond looked at her and muttered, I must be dreaming. (laughs) That's pretty cool, I like that. Well, there you go. Did you enjoy your Mad Lib, James? Yeah, yeah. It's just difficult being put on the spot trying to think of verbs. And I will have to verbs. speed up the process that, that, of you giving me those words. Yeah. But that wraps up Games for James. Games with James. Games What's the speech? With James. Oh, we've got a jingle. Let's have it again. Games with James. It's like the A-team. Games with James. Games with James. Games with James. Games with James. The name's Bond. Games Bond. <laughs> that was the alternate name for that feature. If you think we should change it, please do get in touch on Twitter. Where can they do that, James? Uh, it's at Bond Jam Cast. Cast. <laughs> at Bond Jam Cast on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud. Follow us, give us a like, a share, spread the good word of Bond Jam. I've been Simon Jeffrey. And I'm James Turner. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Cheerio. Cheerio.